Here's a look at a problem I recently had to solve in TypeScript. This is a form response, two different elements in this union. We've got one that's a checkbox type and one that is a text type. And these maybe could be both elements on your form. Now this type field is a great way to discriminate between different parts of this union, right? And we can see that if we have a checkbox type, we have a value that's a Boolean. If we have a text type, we have a value that's a string. So we've got F here, which is some form response. If the type is checkbox, if I hover over f.value here, it's a Boolean. And if it's not, we know the only other option is a string. And so we have this really great strong linking between the type field and the value field. Now let's say we want to create a new type here, rendered form response, that removes the ID field from form response. Since all of the members in our union here have an ID, it seems like this should be pretty straightforward, right? Let's do an omit on form response, and we're going to omit the ID field. This really feels like it makes sense. However, let's look at what has just happened here. If we hover over rendered form response, a couple of things have gone wrong here. We've actually like flattened our union. We have individual unions in the type and the value fields. Type is a union of checkbox or text. Value is a union of string or Boolean. If we look in our if statement down here, we can now see that we don't have that narrowing happening. Value is string or Boolean in the if, and it's also string or Boolean in the else. What has happened here? When I ran into this problem, it led me down the path of understanding distributive conditional types in TypeScript. Let's create a simpler example to understand what's going on here. Let's say we have a type like this, just a simple union. We can use this union in a generic parameter. So here we have an array of a simple union, and the result here, A1, is exactly what you would expect. It's an array where every value in the array is either a string or a number. What if though, instead, we wanted to create something that looks like this, A3, where we have an array of strings or an array of numbers? How do we create this type? This is where we want to like distribute this union. When we pass this union to array, for example, it's treated as a single thing, but we want to treat each one of those parts separately. We want to distribute it, if you will, across whatever the higher type that we're working with here. In this case, it's an array. We can do this in TypeScript. We have to use two different type mechanisms together. One of them is generic parameters, which we've already seen here. And we have to use generic parameters in conjunction with conditional types. Conditional types on their own don't distribute either. In this case, what we're doing is we're saying a simple union, if it extends string, then we return a simple union, otherwise we return never. You can see the type is never, which makes sense because not all of the elements in a simple union are string. So we're not distributing, we're still treating this as a single unit. However, things change when we combine the idea of a generic parameter and a conditional type like this. We could create a type here called only strings. And only strings takes some type t, there's the generic parameter piece, and it does a comparison in here with our conditional. We check to see if t extends a string, and if it does, we return t, otherwise we return never. Let's see what happens here, where we use only strings and we pass it a simple union. Now, this is going to be a little bit underwhelming because we just get string back. But remember, a simple union used to be string or number. And essentially what we've done is we filtered out part of the union. If we come back up here to a simple union and we change this, so we have a union here that has a bunch of other stuff in it. If we come back down here to A4, we're using our conditional type, but no generic. You can see we just get never. However, if we look at A5, you can see we've essentially filtered out anything that wasn't a string from this union. We have treated each one of the elements in the union individually in this conditional logic. And this is how distributive conditional types work. I kind of think about it as like iterating over the members or the elements in your union type. Okay, so let's come back to our original idea here. If we looked at A3, instead of creating an array like A1 here, which is just an array that could be any one of the elements in our union, we wanted to create a union of each one of those types wrapped in an array. And we can do this if we use both of our mechanics, right? The generic parameter and the conditional type. Let's create a type here called to array, and we're going to take some type T. Now we need a conditional type, but what is the condition here? There's nothing that we want to filter out. So we've got to make sure that our condition is going to match everything in this set. There are two ways you can do this. The way that I don't love is to do t extends any. Any shape inside of our union t is going to match any, and so this works. I don't like using any, so the other thing you can do is t extends t. And this looks a little bit weird, but I think that's important here. It looks weird, and that makes you pause, I think, when you look at this code and realize that this isn't a condition for the sake of filtering or like excluding in the way that you might do with a condition usually. Instead, it's a condition to trigger distributivity. t extends t will be true for every element in t, because we're saying, is this one element in t in t? 
And of course it always is. What we can do is if t extends t, which it always will, we have an array of t, otherwise never, which we should never really hit. Let's give this a try. And we can say to array, a simple union. Check it out. We've got array of number or array of undefined or array of checkbox or array of text. Okay, so what does this have to do with our original example? You can kind of see now what's going on here. We have this union, but we're not distributing it. If we look at our rendered form response again, we're treating it as a single type. And what makes it even worse with emit here is that emit is a mapped type. If we hover over emit, you can see we're looping over the keys of T, excluding the keys of K. And that's how we remove this ID field here. And so the combination of both a union that isn't being distributed over and a mapped type is really flattening this type. And as a result, we lose our strong typing for our discriminated union. So we have to distribute this emit call. And this is pretty simple to do. We can create a distributive emit here that will take some type T. And if T extends T, we'll emit T and I guess we need to take K as a second parameter here. K extends string or number or a symbol. If T extends T, then we omit K from T, otherwise never. And so now we can take distributive omit and replace that in our rendered form response here. You can see we don't really get the collapsed type here, but we can see that we're omitting ID from checkbox and we're omitting ID from the text form response as well. If we come back to our type here, when type is checkbox, value is Boolean. If the type is text, our value is a string. There's one more thing we should talk about, and that is what happens if you don't want to trigger this distribution? Let's say you have a type, for example, let's use two array here, where you do take a generic parameter and you do have to do a condition, but you don't want that distribution to happen. How can you prevent that from happening while still using these complex type mechanics together? Well, the way you can do it is by wrapping both sides of your extend in a tuple syntax or an array syntax. And this will prevent distribution from happening. So if we now look at A6, you can see that we have just an array of simple union. We don't get our distribution. We're simply wrapping a simple union in our array. I find in my production code, often you're building types off of each other as you go, and you can get these complex types and Hopefully you'll also have some really good discriminant unions in there to make your life easier, but then you may try and do emits or picks or other operations like this and not realize that you're going to be losing some of the fidelity of your unions when you do that. So if you notice that your types aren't matching up the way you might expect them to, look for places where you might not be thinking about distribution properly. I am really close to 10,000 subscribers here on YouTube. And so I wanted to say a very special thank you to every one of you who has subscribed. And if you're not subscribed and you find this valuable, I would love it if you could hit that button and like this video too if you found it helpful. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.